Hi, I'm Chris. Capitalism is the dominant economic system of the world today. It's a system where the land and the machines and the organizations and everything that produces the things that we need are owned by a few people and used by them to make a profit. So naturally, it's popular with the rich, who own all that stuff, and anyone who thinks they might be rich one day too. As the system that dominates our lives, it shapes all aspects of society, from government and the school to our personal relationships. But because it's so powerful, sometimes we don't really notice it, like a fish doesn't notice water. Here are 10 things you probably hate about capitalism, but might not have realized were caused by capitalism. Oh, but before we start this list, this video was sponsored by the new movie, It Had to Be Said, Judgment Day. The underdog story of a guy who starts a YouTube channel and ends up with literally hundreds of subscribers. It Had to Be Said, Judgment Day. Coming to an empty theater near you. Oh, and as a rare personal update, I should mention to anyone who knows me on Facebook, um, well, I seem to have been permanently banned. <laughs> so you could reach me here or on my blog where you'll find a transcript of this video and by email in the unlikely event you have my email. <laughs> Facebook didn't say why I was banned, but for sure it was for being an extremist. <laughs> Speaking of scary, extremist online content, let's start this list. Number one, you have no freedom. Most of us need to spend most of our waking time working and the rest of our waking time recovering from work. If something you don't want to do takes up all your time, it's taking your freedom. All the time you spend working, you're not doing what you want to do. Your life slips by as you make widgets and punch keys so someone else can get rich. You wouldn't rather be hanging out with friends or playing with your kids or snorting coke, whatever your thing is. In a capitalist system, if you're not rich, you're restricted by a lack of money. You live in a world where everything costs money, so if you don't have enough money to do something, you're not free to do it. Whereas if you have enough money, you're free to do anything, including not working and hiring people to do everything for you, crossing borders without a passport, doing any kind of drug you want, etc., etc. Watch my last video if you want to know more about how little freedom we have under capitalism. Or keep watching this one. Number two, you have way fewer choices than you were promised. Remember when you were young, you shone like the sun. You were told you could do anything and be anything. And then when you were a little bit older, you were told it was because of this country, you know, whichever country and its rock-solid democracy, and its constitution, and because of capitalism. So why are you working at McDonald's? Because you were sold a lie. The system makes it impossible for us all to become rich or do what we want. What else are you supposed to be doing in order to squeeze a little more money into your bank account? Monetizing your hobbies so you end up hating them too? Starting a side hustle and ending up devoting the last of your waking time to work? Going back to school to learn new skills if you can afford to take time off and to pay the tuition? Getting an MBA because that guarantees you a job. Since we all have to earn money somehow, we can only do the work that the people who have money are willing to pay for. If they aren't going to pay you for it, it can be a hobby, 
But the idea you can get rich or even get a job doing what you love was a lie. Number three, mornings and Mondays. Under capitalism, five times a week and maybe more, you need to wake up to the sound of an alarm clock because you haven't slept enough yet. Run around trying to do everything that needs to be done. Hope there isn't too much traffic. Worry about being late and getting punished and pretend to be thankful for all of it. You might even be addicted to coffee at this point, so you don't have time to drink it in the morning. So it could ruin your mood if you don't get your fix. You don't really hate Mondays or mornings. You hate capitalism. Under capitalism, all your waking time is structured around work. So it's not surprising another effect of capitalism is number four, mental illness. Being so stressed and miserable and burnt out, it's not surprising how many cases of depression, anxiety, suicide, addiction, and other mental problems can be traced back to work. The propaganda wants us to blame all those things on purely internal forces like brain chemistry and not having the right attitude as if the external didn't create the internal. External conditions matter just as much to your mental health. And while you can check the sources in the description for yourself, it's not hard to understand why. We're separated from the people we want to be with for most of the day. At work, we're constantly monitored and timed, and deviating from the plan gets you reprimanded and punished and maybe fired. We all run the risk of going bankrupt and winding up homeless for thousands of different possible reasons. In a state of constant stress, people experience hypervigilance, and no one can stay that way forever without breaking down. We're told to find meaning in our lives, but we don't have time to see the people and do the things that would give them meaning. We feel trapped in this system and in this life, and the planet is going to get less inhabitable every year of our lives. That is some serious pressure, and capitalism's at the root of all of it. It's tough for everyone to ch stay cheerful through all that, isn't it? In fact, half of employees in the US report having cried at work due to stress. Then there's the guilt. We actually feel guilty if we're not constantly trying to make more money. Some people brag about how they never rest, just grind all the time, which is sad. Because money is supposed to be a means to an end, not a purpose. Their attitudes are a typical result of capitalist conditioning. We've lived lives surrounded by messages telling us to work and consume. If you aren't following that program, you're supposed to feel guilty. You're supposed to believe you too should have more stuff and should give up your, the last little pleasures you've been squeezing out of life, ignore friends and family, and focus on money. So you take a break or call in sick and you feel guilty. You won't quit a job that's killing you because you might not be able to support people. You think, I can't afford this, and feel like a failure. Well, don't. You weren't born just to make money or accumulate possessions. In fact, probably, number five, you don't want to work. People say you need work to be fulfilled, but they're talking about work that we actually want to do. A job is work you don't want to do. Of course, you might like some aspects of your job, but if so, you're one of the lucky ones. The purpose of a job is to make money for the people who own the company. At work, they'll get you to do things you don't want to do, including things that are unnecessary or boring, and let's not forget dangerous. More than two million people around the world die every year as a direct result of work. Because the people who own the place and make way more money than you would never do that. Their job is to make money off your job. Your behavior at work is constantly monitored and controlled, including what you're allowed to say. 
We're so used to it, we take for granted you can't tell the truth or express an emotion, and you can't complain because, hey, that's what you signed up for. You've got to associate with people you might not like or respect. So if you've got a coworker, or a boss, or a client, or a customer who hates you, your only choice is to suck it up or quit. I think that's what Milton Friedman meant when he said you were free to choose. Thanks, Milt. Owners, or capitalists, meanwhile, don't have to work to get money. They don't want to work either. No one wants to work. But only rich people don't have to work. Otherwise, if you don't work, you're called irresponsible and told you deserve to be poor. Just can't win. Number six, your boss. Now, you might not hate the individual who gives you direct orders, but there's plenty of reason to hate what they represent. The boss represents your powerlessness while at work. They're not that different from prison guards. Don't do anything we haven't authorized. Don't mess up. Or else. The or else part means different consequences, not as bad as prison. But getting fired could lead to poverty, which is a kind of prison of its own. So you have to keep your boss happy, and you have to pretend you're happy, too. You have to follow every rule, every order, however difficult and dirty and arbitrary, because even when what you're doing doesn't make money for the company, the boss can't let you get used to taking breaks or having nothing to do. You're treated like a machine, not a human who deserves basic respect. Look how they want all these people who've been working at home during the pandemic to go back into the office when they've proven they don't have to. The boss can't bear to let you out of the corporation's panopticon. Number seven, competition. You don't like competing with others. I don't mean for fun. I mean in the job market and in the workplace where they make us compete against each other for jobs and raises and promotions. They encourage us to pass the buck so we don't get in trouble, incentivize sabotaging each other, accepting less and less in a race to the bottom when we could be working together instead. There's no reason to believe competition is necessary to create any of the things we have, as if it were the key ingredient in economic alchemy. It just ensures the most destructive behavior is what gets you to the top. Here's something else you hate. Homelessness. Some people hate homelessness because it means there are dirty people in their neighborhoods, ew, and they have to call the police to beat them up. Their banks and property managers take people's homes away from them, and then they say they worked hard to get where they are. Compassionate people hate homelessness because no one should be without a dwelling to keep them warm and safe, because the resources to build homes for everyone exist, but they're in the hands of states and rich people who just don't want to, and because homelessness can happen to anyone. So the, just the existence of homeless people is a kind of threat. Don't play the game, and that's what'll happen to you. If you're not convinced homelessness is an effect of capitalism, ask homeless people how they lost their homes. Did the landlord take it away from them? Was it the bank? Was it a government owned by capitalists? No one just gives up their only home. It gets stolen from you. Just like your freedom is stolen by your job, your health by all the pressure this system puts on you, and your mind by propaganda like this telling you if you don't conform to the system, you deserve your suffering. Number nine, planned obsolescence. Notice how your phone is pretty much useless after only three years. Now remember, it's not just your phone. It's all kinds of things. Cars, electronics, appliances, light bulbs, clothing, shoes, software you need to update before you can use your device, university textbooks that are almost identical to last year's, but you still have to buy the new ones. 
Why can't they make things that last longer? I was told that market competition would lead to ever more useful innovations and ever more of our needs filled. Instead, it turns out competition leads to cosmetic changes, but the need for profit has led to a consensus among manufacturers that products should be designed to break down. If we just had one of something and it worked for a lifetime, corporations would never satisfy the demands of the financial report. The market is in the replacement of stuff we've already paid for. By the way, what do you think happens to all that waste? Is there a profitable way of recycling it yet? No, the profit's still in creating the waste, so we should expect more of it. But can the planet take any more? Which brings us to number 10, climate change. Capitalism is only a few centuries old, and in that time, carbon levels have grown so much, our planet is beginning to boil. Carbon levels have grown steadily every year, and that growth shows no signs of slowing down. We're still burning fossil fuels at an incredible rate, we're still cutting down trees, we're still poisoning the oceans, and we're still farming huge numbers of cows. Just in British Columbia alone this past week, there have been nearly 500 deaths due to the heat. They'll try to pass the buck on to you, of course. All responsibility will be now the individual, the consumer, your carbon footprint. Climate change? Oh, you must not have recycled enough. Or you drove that gas guzzler around for too long, didn't you? Uh -huh. Except most emissions don't come from consumers. They come from a handful of huge corporations who have more than enough money to do something about it. The corporations have known their actions lead to climate change for decades. But they lied about it conducted a misinformation campaign, and lobbied against climate legislation and cleaner emission standards. As a result, people are still denying the human-made effects of climate change during the hottest summer ever, which, by the way, is also the coldest summer we'll ever experience again. Of course, the only these ten things are not a comprehensive list of everything we should hate about capitalism. I haven't even touched on war, colonialism, racism, or slavery. Capitalism robs us of our freedom and our time and our own choices about how to live our lives, destroys our mental health, and has set fire to the planet we live on. These are not bugs. They're features. And there's no compassionate capitalism or green capitalism, so don't be seduced by propaganda words. The solution is to destroy the system, to end our dependence on money and governments and corporations, and organize our lives together, voluntarily. Mutual aid and resistance can bring meaning to your life that most jobs can't. You become part of a much bigger effort that actually solves problems rather than profiting from them. Thanks.